So hello everyone. So this is another solution on how we can avoid race conditions or a solution to the critical section of problem. Okay, so we have the mutex locks. So mutex is short for a mutual exclusion. And this mutex is a construct that can enforce atomicity in the code or it is a synchronization mechanism that allows us to protect shared resources and ensure that they are only accessed by one thread at a time. So um, here's how we can uh, visualize it. So we have one thread, uh, we have two threads, I mean, thread one and thread two. So let's say we are going to create a mutex, okay, mutual exclusion. And then if a certain, uh, if the certain thread is locked, then um, it, it can enter its uh, critical section and, or um, it can perform code that uses a shared resource, right? So that means that if another thread tries to access um, that shared resource or tries to run its critical section that is blocked, okay? And then uh, once that, thread one is unlocked, then that means that another thread can run its critical section. Okay, so fixing the bank uh, balance problem earlier. So we have this um, atomicity. So instead of like context switching, like read and then for thread one and then context switch, thread two will read and then gets preempted, then thread one again, then thread two, then thread one. So instead, what we enforce here is atomicity such that these codes are um, performed as a single indivisible unit before um, the thread two performs its own uh, <laughs> execution. So essentially, what we do here is if we have this entry point, then this is this gets locked. So it will perform its critical section. And this thread two is blocked, okay? And once it is done, then it is unlocked, then the thread two can now uh, use or run its critical section, okay? And then later unlock and then thread one can run again and so on. Okay, so we also have a um, P thread na library for uh, mutex na routines, okay? So root P threads provides a set of mutex routines for initializing or locking, unlocking, and destroying mutex na objects. Okay, so these are some uh, these are some key mutex na routines. So first is the P thread or mutex na init. So this function initializes a mutex na object, which can then be used for mutual na exclusion. And then we also have the mutex na, uh, destroy, where it is used to destroy a mutex. And a critical section can be protected using the p thread mutex lock and the p thread mutex unlock. So essentially, the p thread mutex lock locks a mutex, which prevents other threads from accessing the shared resource protected by the mutex. Okay. So the pre-thread mutex unlock then, then tries to um, again unlock that uh, unlock that mutex. Okay, so this is how we can uh, visualize it into code. So we have this pre-thread library in C, and you have already used this before. And then we have um, a mutex object, and we initialize. Um, a mutex, okay. So this function um, takes a pointer, takes um, a pointer, mute, which points to this, um, which points to this uh, mutex that we have created, okay, or this this object mutex that we have created, right? <clears throat> yeah. And then while this null refers to the attribute. Uh, that is specified for this specific na mutex. 
Okay, so as you can see here, after we have initialized, then we can lock a certain mutex and then that certain thread can run its critical section. And then at its exit point, then it will be unlocked and later should be destroyed. Okay, so we have a condition of variable <clears throat> that we can use as a, as a synchronization mechanism. And this allows the threads to wait for a certain condition to become true before continuing, continuing its execution. So this condition variable represents some condition that a thread can wait on until some condition occurs, or it can be used to notify other waiting threads that a certain condition has already occurred. So this is the signal na part, okay? <clears throat> And there are three operations that we can use for um, this condition of variable. So we have the wait. So what the wait does is it blocks until another thread calls the signal or broadcast on the CV. Okay. And the signal is waking up one thread waiting on the CV. And the broadcast picks up all the thread that is waiting on the CV or the condition of variable. Okay. So essentially, what it means if if meron kang condition, and then and that CV will can be initialized, waited on, signaled, or broadcasted. Okay. If uh, if it is waiting, then a function can wait on a condition variable, blocking the thread until a condition is um, signaled by another in a thread. While for the signal, this uh, signals a certain thread to already wake up and continue its execution. While the broadcast is, the, is um, signaling all the threads that is waiting on that condition of variable okay, to wake up and continue its execution. All right. So these are the these are the routines that is available in pthread. Okay. So we have pthread underscore cont underscore t. So this function initializes a condition variable. And then uh, we have the pthread underscore cont underscore wait. Okay. So this function is the one waiting on the condition no variable. Okay, blocking the thread until the signal is already called by another thread. And then this cont na signal is the function that is that signals a single thread that is waiting for the single the variable. And then the broadcast is signaling all threads waiting on the condition of variable to wake up and continue its execution. So let's have this example. So a thread is designed to take action when x is equal to zero. And another thread is responsible for decrementing the counter. So we have this um, routines that is given by the pthread in the mutex. Okay, as mentioned, a thread is designed to take action. So this action when x is equal to zero. So we activate here the lock, all right, in a mutex. And this is the condition the part. All right, so we want to take action only when x is equal to zero. So while x is not equal to zero, then we are going to wait for um, wait on the condition of variable. So how do we know that x is already equal to zero or while x is not equal to zero? So another thread is responsible for decrementing the counter. So what this counter does is uh, this, there is also a um, lock and lock na mechanism. So this is another thread. And what it does is it decrements the counter. Okay. So if x is equal to zero already, then it will signal, it will send a signal to this variable or to this um, condition, condition variable that is waiting for um, condition variable. And it sends a signal to tell this thread to wake up, okay, and continue its execution. Okay, 
So all condition of variable must be performed while a mutex is locked. So let us see what actually happens. Okay, again, this is the action which only uh, um, which waits for the x to become equal zero. Okay, so that's the condition variable. And another na code that is decrementing the counter. Okay, so what happens first? The lock we lock the mutex for this thread. And uh, this runs, and then we also lock the mutex for this thread while this condition is, the condition variable is waiting. So it puts the thread into sleep and releases the lock, okay? And now here, if x is already equal to zero, it sends a signal and it sends a signal to the condition variable to wake up and uh, sends a signal to the mm, thread waiting on this condition variable to wake up and continue its execution. So now um, it's already awake, but the thread is still locked, right? And now it releases the lock and it reacquires the lock and resume its execution. And now it, releases the lock also and this is done executing okay so in the next video we are going to discuss about semaphores